Well, more in boys and girls, friends, enemies, whoever, whatever. I thought today <coughs> I'd go back in time and we'd have a trucking memory. Mm. I know, I've actually got quite a few of those. Now this was pre... I'm trying to sort something out around the back here. This is pre-EU. This is when... Um, you still had to do borders. You get paperwork, T1s, T2s, CMRs, carnetiers, German border tank shines. Um, and you get off at Calais, and the first thing you do is put 10 francs in your passport to stop the policeman giving you any hassle. Um, on this particular run, Sorry, I'm thinking of other things while I'm talking. On this particular run, I was off to Germany. A really lovely three night out, really quick trip. I was really looking forward to it, get home early. Two drops in Germany, Dusseldorf, and just above Frankfurt, and then into Frankfurt, some air freight, back to Heathrow. Um, air freight, if a lot of you don't know, quite often went by road. Um, it was cheaper and sometimes quicker and the airlines made a bit of a profit on it um, So your air freight didn't always go by air Anyway on this occasion I got to the Belgian German border at Aachen and took all my paperwork in Ah bless I could tell by the the face on the guard that he wasn't gonna be a nice guard. You could see it. Mr. Grumpy Pants. And he was going through the paperwork, the CMRs, and he stopped at one and he looked at me and said, Was it us? Well, normally I spoke a bit of German back, but I wasn't in the mood because he was a miserable fart and I know damn well he spoke bloody good English. They all do. So I said, it's Guinness, miniatures for advertising. He said, explain. So I did, I explained what a little miniature, um, one and a half inch high bottle. They used to give them away, giveaways, back in the early 70s. They probably still do occasionally. I think I've still got one at home sitting in a cupboard somewhere. And he said, we do not import beer into Germany. And I thought, oh you fuckwad. Often used to think things like that. So I smiled politely and I said, okay, I'll go over to the agents and sort it out. We had an agent there called Nuns. Any of you ex-truckers will remember them. And walked in, explained the situation. And they said, yeah, no problem. If you go to our groupage warehouse, which is about a mile into Belgium, have it taken off. So I did, got it took off. Went back, got cleared, carried on down, did my first drop. Next day, did my second delivery, explained to them what had happened. They were fairly all right with it, they didn't care. Went down to Frankfurt to pick up my load back and the guy there said, your boss has been on the phone, you must ring him. Uh, here we go. So I rang him and I said, Richard, what's the problem? And he said, uh, it's pallet of Guinness. Guinness are kicking off, they want it back. Okay, well, you know, why are you phoning me? I've got a full load of air freight. I said, well, you'll have to bring it back. I said, I can't. I said, what do you mean you can't? I said, well, it's a full load for a start, top to bottom, front to back. 
and they seal it. And if that seal is broken by anybody but customs, I get shot. You know that, I know that. What's your problem? He said, well, I haven't got a problem you have. It needs to come back. Okay, hung up. That peed me off slightly. Well, on the way back, I phoned around a bit when I was down in um, Dunkirk. I had a few hours off and I made a few phone calls. And I went, he threw, tipped the load. Got back to the yard, walked in the office. Richard was there. Had a go at me. I put my keys on the desk, all the paperwork. And I said, well, I've cleared the lorry out. You can stick the job up your backside or worse that effect. Went home, had a lovely long weekend and started another job. On uh, Tuesday I started a firm in Ipswich. It's surprising in those days you could get a job. Um, I was known by a few other hauliers and I was known by people so phoning up and saying hi oh, it's Alan Bolter. I'm looking for some driving, I've had a problem. You explain what's happened. You don't just ask for a job, you explain what has happened. And yeah, third person I phoned had to start. Well, that wasn't a very good job. In fact, it was quite a nasty, mucky, dirty job. So I didn't last there very long. And I was at home and a friend of mine, Stuart, he rang up, he said, uh, do you want a quick one hit down to Vienna? Or Linz, actually, sorry, Linz. And he said, good money, and I'll run you back in my truck, and we can double man back. I said, yeah, all right, I'll do that. And he's a couple of pence to spend. It turned out that a truck driver from Austria had got to Northampton, jumped out of his cab, looked across the road to our directions, <coughs> but had got, but had looked the wrong way and got taken out by a car, broke his leg quite badly. And the boss, Gerhard, wanted his lorry back. So we went and collected it at a warehouse. Left hand drive Volvo F10. I took it back to him. And that is how I started working out of Austria for an Austrian company. And because this lorry was the driver who's injured truck after a few weeks we all got moved about anyway and I ended up with a Renault Magnum bloody great thing you could hold a discotheque in the cab it was one of those you could walk around in double bunks night eaters it was after some of the crap I'd been driving it was glorious anyway that was a little chapter of my life just a an amusing incident. I don't know if you're going to find it as amusing as I did, but I've got to think of something to talk about. I know there haven't been many videos, basically because I haven't been out, I haven't been doing much. What is there to do? Everywhere's ruddy well locked down. Um, just been out this morning to get a few little essentials. and back home, tuck myself in and wait to see what silly game the government plays next. I'll catch you later. Have fun, be happy, smile at the miserable twats, you know it pisses them off. Bye.